Hello and thank you so much for joining us for another edition of Waterworks. Waterworks this week focuses on the additional steps which are being taken to complete the Fort James Reverse Osmosis Plant. The APA Water Business Unit tells us that the plant is about 95% complete. One of the last areas is this that's taking place behind us. The trencher is digging a trench for a 10-inch HDP pipe to be installed. Once that pipe is laid, it will take water that's produced from this plant to the main of the APUA so that customers can actually get it into their taps. We started out with the backhoe because we had to undermine some cables on the southern side of the, um, the road. And then after the trencher came at about 10.30 and uh, it caught at 12 for lunch. So they dig about an hour and a half. It's been going smoothly as planned. Talk to me about the difference between using the trencher and the backhoe. Or which one is more effective and quicker? The, both of them is effective, but they come in at certain times. The trencher on the straight, you will use it because it dig a little faster. In situations where we have to use the backhoe, like presently around the lamppost, because the excavator could not go, the situation, the backhoe now have to come in place and pick up where the changer left out there. But after that, the changer will pick up again. We have an existing, I think it's a six inch line, but that particular line is a bit aged. And so it will not be able to handle the, the pressures or the water pressure that's coming off the reverse osmosis plant. In fact, what we anticipate would happen if we try to utilize that now, the way it is now, it will rupture. And rupture, even though repair. So the best thing for us and the most sensible thing to do is to install a new line, which are larger, also a larger kind capacity, so you can get more water moved from the plant in a shorter place. Okay, so there was an existing one which is six inches, six, six inch inches, line. Yes. And that ran from where to where? It basically, just outside the plant, goes up to Biden's corner. Okay. So you're not using that, you won't be using that at all no, when you start producing from here? As our transmission line, no. Okay. So you're using a bigger pipe, 10 inches, 10 inch. and you'll also use an HDP pipe. That's correct. Okay. Which will last longer? Way longer. Okay. Walk me through, uh, so, so this is crucial. When are you looking to finish this side of the well, project? Well, again, <clears throat> our hope is that maybe by Monday, we will have this pipe laid and connected over the line span. Once that is done, then it's just a matter of, as we say, get water in the line. Excellent. All right. In addition, there is, in addition to the excavation here, there is also the tank that you're using, which is a intermediate solution. It's a kind of a makeshift solution until you can get the two permanent tanks constructed. Walk me through that part of the project. Okay. So what happened, those tanks, or that tank that we intend to use, what we call the backwash tank, it's approximately 20,000 gallons. Now, it, it sounds small in comparison to 350,000 gallons, which is what the major tank should be. However, your pump set will be able to draw off the water distribution as it comes to the tank. So you saw the balance level of the tank. So the concern, I'm sure in someone's mind, only 20,000, how can they get a 500,000 gallon plant online, a 20,000 gallon tank. Well, like I said, inlet, if inlet matches outlet, then your level inside the tank will remain the same. All in all, we're about 95% ready. Of course, once you start testing and commissioning, you may have to change some parameters to ensure that um, everything is working the way it should work. We expect at least a day or two of that should happen and then we should be fully online by um, August 31st. We're still awesome. sticking to that date. Yes, yeah, still sticking to that. Final question, Mr. Lewis. And this is where our viewers would be perhaps most keenly interested in. So after you started to send water onto the line, is there going to be an immediate impact for the consumers that, that this plant is going to serve? Immediately. Are, are they going to start seeing, as of the 1st of, or 31st of August or 1st of September, that they're getting more water? Yeah, when we did our calculations, it will take about four to five hours just to fill the line from the plant to um, the corner of Fort Road. So I can say it's six to eight hours after we start the plant, we should see an immediate effect within the areas, which is Point Villa, Fort Road, and McKinnon's, 
and yards. Those areas will see an increase in production. At first, they may see some elevated pressures in, in the lines. And those are some of the things that we need to monitor and also adjust. Because at this end, we can pump as high as 100 PSI. What they have been getting in their lines over the past few months might have been 30, maybe 40 PSI. So we're going to ask the consumers to be aware of the pressures. And if they notice exceedingly high pressures, that they should contact us so that those pressures can be adjusted. There you have it from the head of the APA's water business unit. Can't come higher than him except if we're going to go to the general manager of the APA. In terms of the water business unit, he's the head honcho and he says that the plan is still on track for the 31st of August to start providing and producing water from this time. As I said, the work is obvious behind us. The trencher in working in earnest to ensure that the product pipe, the 10-inch product pipe, can actually be connected to the main. That's it for this week's Waterworks. See you next week.